inspire. Welcome back to Starting Now. I'm your host, Jeff Saris. This is the show where I talk to entrepreneurs to reveal their story and the many different ways of becoming an entrepreneur, of starting a business. Uh, The goal with this show is to help you get started on your next idea. This week on the podcast, I talked to John Bostock. John is the co-founder of Truman's, which is a non-toxic cleaning company, but more than that, non-toxic and sustainable, I should say, which we'll dive into what that means for them and how they've really, really changed the game. But the one thing I just want to showcase right now is just how much fun they have with their brand. Their products are Your Dish Is My Command, which is their dishwasher detergent. They have laundry detergent called Get a Load of This and a toilet bowl cleanser called Reporting for Duty. It's it's just a lot of fun. Their personality and everything just flows through the brand and it's it's great. I think you're really going to appreciate it when you check it out. This conversation with John was awesome. We dive into the business, we dive into how he started and how they came to sort of develop this brand and this brand messaging to make it stand out in a very crowded space. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. But yeah, so it's been a full day of Zoom calls. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, dude, it's like the new the new normal is uh, is you just sit in a screen and you talk like we're talking right now, you know, and then every once in a while, my kids will come in and and pop in and say hello and make fun of my company or my book, but that's about it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they're they're like uh, special guests in your Zoom calls. So that's nice. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, so The Elephant's Dilemma. That's yeah. your book that's coming out. And actually, when this, is, when this is airing, when people are listening to this, it's already out. Um, I hadn't come across that phrase before, but I love it. Could you sort of give a little like insight into what the elephant's dilemma is? Yeah, it's wild. I and I think back to my own career, and there were all of these moments where I felt completely stuck. And when you think about the elephant's dilemma, you think about this little elephant, and it's born into a zoo. And you think about the fact that from its earliest days, it was taught to be tethered, and when it grew to be big and strong, and it could break free it felt as though it was still tethered based on what it had learned when it was younger. And so really the the title, I think, captures the whole concept really well about us being really tethered to our environments. And we think about our inability to break free and take leaps. It's really based on what we've seen when we're younger. It's based on the way we perceive risk to be. And I, it, it really, when you think about what we need to do to make the world a better place. It's going to take some pretty big leaps, but we're really big and we're really strong and we can make those leaps. And so it just, it felt so right. The book title just felt like it really captured everything it is uh, that I'm trying to say in the book. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it's such a great uh, visual too for like people can really see and grasp what that is. And I, I haven't seen that connected in that way. So uh, right off the bat, I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to, I want to talk to this guy for sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love this. You. That is so cool. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. So your company, your company is Truman's. It is a, I guess maybe I'll let you describe it. So then um, we get it just right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's two sides of it. One is I, I started the company with a guy that I met at a company called Big Ass Fans. So on one side, it's like this brotherly love and a situation where we should never be in the room. And on the other side, you've got this really serious, disruptive company. And so we have a ton of fun with the business. You know, Truman's was built to to really rethink cleaning. When you think about it as a category, it's not sustainable. Most of the products are shipped using water. So if you think about a bottle of Windex, it's a product that's 98% water. It makes no sense to build a big factory to facilitate that and ship it from point A to Z. And so when Alex and I left Big Ass Fans after the sale of the company, we basically said, what category needs people like us? People like us who are willing to take a leap, to break free from the standards, the norms, and to imagine a category that's built ultimately in a way that is going to make it sustainable. And not necessarily sustainable in the way that everyone thinks about, but a way that matches 
with today's lifestyles, a way that we're shipping the concentrate versus shipping a big bottle that is ready to use and is 98% water. And so we really reimagined the company. We launched it about a year ago. It's extraordinarily fun. I made the joke about Alex and me kind of on a day-to-day basis acting like brothers that never wanted to be brothers. But you know, it's really an extraordinary uh, thing. And as I look back on taking leaps, I really hope others are, are inspired to do the same thing because it, it look, it, it's not easy, but we need more companies like Truman's to look at categories and say, they're broken. There is a better way. And let's lead the charge to do it. Yeah. So you were, you were working at GE. Um, I love the, the very first little, uh, <laughs> the first paragraph in the book. I just loved how you connected your job to, oh, what was it? 30 Rock, I think. Oh, it's and, terrible. It's just... I know it's, it's insane. <laughs> um, absolutely. Yeah, it's so silly. Uh, but it's it's great. It's such a yeah great connection there. So you started. You were at GE for yeah. uh, quite a few years, right? Yeah. And moving up the ranks. Then you moved on to big ass fans. But then you broke free to start doing your own thing. How was that transition? What did you do to go from like pretty like typical like corporate job into starting your own company? Yeah. Look, and and here's what I would tell you. I, I think my GE career. It was great. But if any executive tells you they're comfortable or if any executive tells you they're not stressed or have anxiety, they're lying. And for me, on paper, I was doing well. But every single year, I reflected on the year and thought, I I need to be doing more. I want to be part of something bigger. I personally didn't have the confidence and I didn't have the ability to say that I could take a leap and that leap will pay off and therefore I should do it. I really was stuck and I was stuck in the moment. And so I, I did, I, I started at GE. I thought I may be with the company a few years. Uh, those few years turned into 11. And I can specifically remember five years in a car ride where I looked at my wife and I said, I, I think I'm done. I want to do something bigger. When I look back at my career, I want to be proud of the mark that I made. And guess what? I was with the company another six years and I'm not that old. So we're talking large chunks of my life devoted to something that ultimately was was where I was stuck, where I was tethered. And so I finally, after 11 years, developed the confidence to take a leap. Now, look, it paid off. I went into a company called Big Ass Fans, successfully restructured it and sold it. And that served as a platform to do other things. But I can tell you that the goofy microwave example, which which you refer to in the book, felt like a huge leap at the time. And now that I look back, I laugh. And the reason why I call it goofy is because it is. And what we need to do is recognize that we need to support each other and we need to be kind to each other because there is not one executive who has that thought that they want to do something bigger. And, you know, you think about the huge opportunity that we have as a global community to inspire people to do things that give back, to inspire people to do things that are truly sustainable, that will make the world a better place. And so the more we can allow people to break free, the more we can share these stories, the better. Because I was that way. You know, you could look on paper and say you built a phenomenal resume. What I would tell you is, I wish I could go back and whisper in the ear of that guy in that car five years in and say, you can make the leap. You can do it and you can go out and do something really extraordinary. Yeah, I think that is huge because a lot of us don't have maybe entrepreneurial people in our lives like by default. It's it's especially it's getting more and more common now. But um, I had a very similar sort of trajectory in that I never realized I worked uh, in a cubicle for a local government for seven years and I didn't realize that I could break free and do something differently until I had the right inputs, until I started to actually hear the stories and hear the things that made me be like, oh, I can I can do this. This is something that this is actually an opportunity and a possibility that's out there, which I think is huge. And I think and that's what I think you're going with with the book, too, is trying to say it in your unique way that then maybe it'll resonate with someone who something else, everything else just hasn't thus far. And I think that's hugely valuable. Yeah, I, um, I, really, I really think there's two lanes. There's the excitement of you as an individual, what you really want to do. And then there's the idea of you being a part 
of something bigger. And if you look at almost every single category or every industry, you can find a way to pay it forward. I, I struggle at times. In fact, it's fun sometimes to get challenged to say, if I were with X company or if I were interested in, in one type of opportunity to not find a way to pay it forward. Even if you look at what you're doing right now, you and I are hopefully inspiring at least one person to think about the world in a different way. And that is magic. And, and yet, if you hadn't taken that step, we, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. And I think that's the way that we have to think about our time here and the way that we can contribute to this global community. Yeah, I mean, we we all have a platform now. It's amazing. It's in the last 10 years or so, it's grown immensely. And whether it's through podcasting or social media or anything, there's so much opportunity and potential for inspiring people and also showing the way. There's there's so much inspiration and um, like great inspiration. And then I like to also dive into the how on here, just so obviously not to follow your steps, not to be like, oh, I need to do this, this, this. I need to go work at GE. Then because it's like, it just, that's not it. But I think there's so much that we can get, like that we can learn from the various stories because everyone's story is completely different. So you made the, tra- the change from GE to Big Ass Fans to cleaning supplies. How did you discover that this was the the area that you wanted to go into? And how did you find the need because you're you're very focused on um on giving back like you said and doing something good for the planet how did you find that cleaning supplies was it and were there other things that you sort of dabbled in before cleaning yeah it it is, it is a really good question and and when you know in the book i talk about the struggle that i had at ge and the desire to do something bigger but it really wasn't the right environment to make big impacts and make big leaps within the company my idea of sustainability as it related to big ass fans was a pretty significant challenge. It was taking a company that was a founder led company for 20 years and turning it into a company that was built to last well after the founder had, had, had left the company. That is a concept of sustainability. And so for me, I don't necessarily think of sustainability equaling things like no plastic or non-toxic only. I think of sustainability as creating systems or processes that ultimately will last, and by the way, make the community or the globe a better place. And so for big ass fans, what that meant was building a company within that area in a way that it was sustainable and it could be around for a long time and give back to that community, which was very important to the community. It was one of the largest employers there and therefore the need to make it work over the long term was important. If you look at cleaning as a category, what really, really surprised us was how broken the category is. And because it's broken, it's not sustainable in the way that consumers can continue to afford the products. And so if you think about just very holistically, if a bottle of Windex, which is 98% water, is very expensive to ship, someone ultimately will have to pay for that. But ultimately, what the consumer really wants is just to concentrate. And it's one example where we did look holistically. We left big ass fans and we had a lot of options. But where we saw the biggest opportunity to reimagine it was in cleaning. And look, I'm a dad. I've got two crazy kids that run around my house every day. So cleaning (laughs) cleaning is something that I that I do quite a bit. But it when you when you when you want to make a mark specifically in the business world, and look back and say, now what you did contributed, it's hard to find a category that's more broken than cleaning because of the way it's structured. It's really built for traditional retail, not for e-commerce. It's built for effectively moving water through a supply chain. And you don't have to do it that way. So we saw a huge opportunity to reimagine it. What were some of the first steps you took then? Because you you see the opportunity, but you're you don't come from the cleaning space. So, <laughs> yeah. like, where do you even begin? Yeah, you know, for, for us, and and one of the key characteristics is you know you lean on things that work. And one of the things that big executives used to say at GE is, look, even though we're a big company, we've done it. Let's not re- recreate the wheel here, and let's find a way to do it. And you know, I kind of took that approach to big ass fans, where you you looked at the situation and. And you had things that worked really well. And it was about extracting those things that worked really well and repeating them 
in other areas. And when we looked at cleaning, what we saw is there were pockets of cleaning that figured it out. As an example, there's a there's a coffee chain that everyone knows. And when you look at the way they clean, um, they clean in a really smart way. They use concentrates and they figured out the right way to use the concentrates and the right formulas. And so we looked at the category and we said, you know, there are some cohorts doing it well. It's just the average consumer doesn't know about it. So how can we translate some of that learning that already is working to the mass market? And so I think the magic for me is is looking at categories that exist, looking at the infrastructure that exists and figuring out a way to make it more accessible. You know, I look at Uber. Uber did that. Uber said there are cars on the road. There are people who'd like to make an income. Let's help people get from point A to point B using that infrastructure. I think, you know, the same example is for hotels. If you think about macro challenges like homelessness, I even read an article about how hotels could be used to quarantine COVID patients. It's using existing infrastructure, existing space for the good and for the better. And it's reimagining what works. And so what we looked to with cleaning was where were pockets that worked? How could we replicate that? How could we scale that concept? And effectively, you know, what I think people don't realize is you can start small. You can start and prove a concept. You take that first step. And once you see that it works, you then expand it. But you don't need to start as an Elon Musk. You don't need to start, you know, with the electric vehicle and then with these big, huge leaps. You can start small. You can take that first step and then build it out from there once you know it's successful. And along those lines, then. How at the beginning, it was you and your co-founder, yeah. how long before you brought in employees, started really running with the brand and, and the business? Well, I'll tell you that the scariest thing for me um, was the day we turned the company on because you come up with this concept and you wonder, will anyone think it's funny? And, you know, we're uh, if you get to know our brand, Truman's is not the most serious uh, brand out there, but we believe in high quality products, but we love to have fun while doing it. And so yeah, you have great messaging. I love it throughout. I was just going through everything in social media and it's just so much fun. Like one of the things I just jotted down, cleaning glass and taking names. I just, yeah, <laughs> just stuff like great. that. It just really yeah. showcases it. That's a, so the first thing is like, will anyone even like it? Right. We, you know, you put something out there. And, and so really the first step for us is, will anyone come to the site and will someone buy? I remember the very first day we were sitting there saying, I can't wait to see that first purchase of someone we don't recognize the name. And then, you know, and, and it felt like every milestone, every little proof point was a step. And, you know, now you look back and you think, I can't believe the challenges we got through, but also where we are today. It's almost hard to believe because every day is like climbing a new mountain that happens to be on fire. And then you get to the top <laughs> And you go to sleep and then you wake up and it's a bigger mountain the next day and, and, and the fire is still raging, right? And so you 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 don't you don't really take those moments where you look back and say, wow, the first hire, what, like what was that like? What did it feel like? Because it just feels like this incredible sprint. But I can tell you that we have tried to embrace every moment and we've tried to make every proof point, every step something we celebrate. Because we, we want it to be human and we want it to be authentic. And what we want is to truly change the category. And so we, we really have kind of a longer term perspective and saying like, look, these mountains are tough. And like, you know, if you read comments I make on LinkedIn, I talk about the high highs and the low lows. That's all real. And so we try to embrace it. And, you know, those are magical moments. Like, you know, when is an example and, and I you know, I, I, I tell people not to do this, but like, you know, you see an employee comment on, on, on the weekend and you think, wow, like that is dedicated. Like I'm doing stuff on the weekend because I have to, you know, like it, we're an e-commerce company, but you know, it's, it's super special to, to just be, be a part of something that seems to be moving in industry. And it's super special to have, built up the confidence to take that first little step and then a bigger step and then a bigger step with Truman's and, and just, just be in the middle of it. It's, it's super special. And it's something that, you know, I hope inspires others to do the same thing because simply put, we just need more people to be willing to take leaps and you're not always going to be successful, but just doing it helps create new thinking and 
it, it creates action and, and we need more good action in the world. Yeah, that's and that's the reason for this show, too, is just starting now because getting started not to obviously not that everyone should quit their job and just go all in on some idea until they test and they have like the experience like you have. But at the same time, just to know that, hey, no, this can happen. This is how you can do this. And we don't have that sort of safety net anymore. It's not the same, like, go to school, get a job, retire. And it's just a smooth line. It's it's very jagged along along that path these days. Yeah. Um, so your brand, the marketing, the uh, the messaging through it is so good. How did you approach that was it day one you're like this is going to be a funny brand was it something you've tested along the way was it someone came in and helped with that like how did you approach the the brand messaging yeah so you know look the advice i would give anyone is number one you have permission to do something and number two take the leap and do it for us mm -hmm. when we took the leap and when i say us it's 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 alex and me we we did it in the beginning and we wanted the brand to be an extension of who we are. And what we felt is that most cleaning brands were not human. They were not authentic and they were really not linked to a, a founder story. And while we didn't want it to be about us, we wanted it to be an extension of our personalities. Now we're sarcastic. We love humor. It's one of the things that really connects the two of us. And so when we were dreaming up what this company should be, one of the things that we thought was absolutely hilarious was the fact that when you walk in a retail environment, you see a glass cleaner and it's called glass cleaner. So literally, it doesn't matter what brand it is, it's glass cleaner. And we thought it is so hilarious because, you know, this category is so broken that this poor product has a descriptive name, right? And so we just said it would be funny if we came up with names for our products that we think are funny. So things like the glass is always cleaner. Like that's the name <laughs> of our of our glass product or, or our laundry product. Get a load of this, right? And, <laughs> and so once we kind of came up with the idea that the brand actually had a personality, it really exploded from there. So the concept was born and it was so easy for us to kind of be on brand because it was an extension of who we are. So if, you know, like if you listen to a phone conversation with us, it would be very similar <laughs> to our <laughs> marketing, you know, and 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 so we goof around a lot. In fact, we just shot a, a four hour and, and they're going to cut it down, but a, a video on the company, there's like 45 minutes of outtakes and I watched it and it just <laughs> made me laugh. And and but that's part of it, right? It's the human side. It's it's the extension of who we are. And, you know, if you think about what you're doing and what's so special about what you're doing here, it's that this is what you believe in. You're not, you're not tethered to some concept where you're showing up and you're interviewing someone because you don't believe in it. You believe in this and that's why it works. And I think for us, the brand works because it's, it's us. And by the way, we didn't hire an agency. And, and frankly, we struggle with how does an A how does an agency capture the insanity that's in our heads? But, um, you know, it, 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 it is it is a great it is kind of a great story because I think it really ties to it not only should give people the confidence to say they can do it, but it gives people permission to be who they are. And in a world where people feel like they have to do certain things to fit in, in a world where people think that they have to act a certain way and look a certain way, this is an example that just do what you believe in. And if you want to be different, be different and be special and create a lasting impact and, and make the world a sustainable place, not in the way that is so goofy, sustainable in the way that we're kind to each other, sustainable in the way that we're thinking about uh, how to make it better for our neighbors, how to make it better for future generations. Like that's what this is all about. And, and so, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully that's the battle cry and, and, yeah, and I think you look at our company and hopefully it's a macro proof point that, that people can do it. Yeah, for sure. And be you. Uh, that's great <laughs> advice because that's we connect with people. We don't it's harder to connect with a brand, but when your brand is an extension of you, we have so such a deeper connection to it. And <laughs> It's yeah, that's it's a great approach. When we started, so we started in uh, 2009. Our brand is Spire, and we we develop 
we help people develop brands and their websites and uh, digital everything. But when we started, we took a similar approach because it was just like, like just be us, be silly, do whatever we want to do because this is how we can stand out. Because otherwise, when we try to fit in, like as you like as you said, and in the book and everything, there are so many cleaning supplies, so many brands. Okay. If you were just going to be like the rest with maybe a slightly different, maybe you use recycled plastic or you do whatever, that doesn't stand out. So like you've you found your lane and you've you've ran with it. So I really like that. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. That's super. I, I really appreciate that. I, and, and, and by the way, I love, you know, I talk about being kind and, and rarely I think do people take time to get to know something and compliment. And so that is also, you know, we talk about it. Um, in the company, and I talk about it in the book all the time, that you have to show appreciation for things. And we as a society don't do it enough. You know, when you think about just what people are willing to do for others. And so I'm super appreciative of, of, of that feedback because um, it, it's, it's it just, it's validating, right? And um, you're obviously phenom- phenomenal at what you do. And so any, any feedback that we're... Uh, that we're on the right track is, uh, is incredible. So thank you. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so in terms of company size, how many employees do you have? And is, has it been a steady growth? How, did you have to hire a bunch of people early on? Because I, I imagine you do still have to have a factory, um, which I, I saw you were in um, New Orleans, right? Yeah, that's right. And then I think is the factory elsewhere or the actual like headquarters? Yeah, so the headquarters is in Kentucky. Um, okay. we, we have tried to keep our full time team really lean, and we do rely on contractors. So we have a U.S. based customer service team, and um, I mentioned a coffee shop earlier. We've had great <laughs> success um, borrowing baristas from uh, that favorite coffee shop to be part of our customer service team. But look, that's part of it that we want an amazing customer experience, and, and we can't outsource that. So if you look at the company, we've tried to stay lean, but where we have invested in, in, in talent is within our customer service team, because this is really a category that, that people have questions on and, and people need help. And so um, we want to be able to deliver on that. We do have manufacturing. We're super proud to say that we've partnered with companies in the US to deliver on that. It is not easy. Um, but with our commitment to the supply chain and really shortening the point from A to B, uh, you need to do it. And so we actually have a partner uh, in Kentucky and a partner in Georgia. And we're partnered with them to, to really bring our, our products to life in just a phenomenal way. And, and so um, we, we do have some other partners who help us um, on the performance marketing side, the web optimization side. And so we built a nice scalable company. But I think if you were to say what's one area where we're really investing in kind of building talent, it's, it's customer service. And I think that would surprise a lot of people um, because you think about a company that's as forward thinking as we are from a supply chain perspective, as kind of cheeky as we are from a brand perspective, that we're so maniacal about customer service. But we really, I think what we're most proud about is that um, we, we want to create special moments for our customers. And the only way you can do that is if you have dedicated people who, who are t- who are conduits and, and, who are, are, are creating positive touch points. And that's one more way to connect too. I mean, it's connection is really what seems to be the, the through line in your, in your brand and your business is connecting with people and, and supporting them. So what does a typical day look like as your CEO and co-founder, correct? Um, what does a typical day look like for you? <laughs> Today, it's, it's typically chaos. I've got a four-year-old and a nine-year-old. <laughs> Um, no, but, but, you know, I, I, I wake up fairly early. My co-founder wakes up obnoxiously early. I typically, um, talk to him at around 6.30 or 6.45 every day. So, um, my day typically starts with a phone call and I do it typically when I'm walking my dog. And so, uh, I'll be out doing that and then, and then I'll get off the phone and my kids come down and it is like crazy. Uh, you know, there's just tons of, of, of chaos. One thing that I commit to is and when school gets back, um, I'm going to continue to do it. I love dropping them off in the morning. So truly, part of my day is that moment with them, um, and and then obviously I, I try to work out after I drop them off. Then just get going on Truman's, and you know we spend a lot of time uh, talking to potential partners because I live 
in a different city than where the company is located. I spend a lot of my, t- my time doing this on Zoom call and, uh, and, and, and talking with people on the phone. But look, my, my day is really diverse. In any given day, uh, after dropping the, the little, little ones off, I could be dealing with legal issues, supply chain issues, marketing issues, customer service issues. It, it's, it's really wide. And you know, as we grow, we obviously want to build sustainable teams within the organization that can handle things. But you know, we're, we're still a growing company. We're still very lean. And so the breadth of, of what I do on a day-to-day basis is pretty wide. But I definitely, you know, the headlines are, is, is have that touch point one-on-one with my co-founder. I think that's super important. Spending time with kids, incredibly important. I traveled way too much during my time at GE. And so uh, dropping them off and picking them up, that is my wheelhouse. Um, I also try to spend meaningful time with them and cook. Um, and, and it's kind of a creative outlet and it, it gives me a chance just to connect with them. And so, you know, um, it, I'd say that the day is is insane, but it's insane because you only have so much time with your kids and you have to put them front and center. And so, yes, running a company is complex, but look, I can take a conference call outside my kid's drum lesson. I can, uh, because we're not allowed in the room, right? Now with, <laughs> with baseball, I help coach and I can't do that, but you know, it's, it's just got to be engaged. And so I really... You know, when you ask about a day, it's, it is insane, but it, it's it's good insane. And uh, you know, you can probably hear them bouncing around upstairs while I'm on this on this uh, conversation with you. Yeah, and that's it's satisfying. It's that insanity, but it's for yourself. It's for you as a as a father and for your children, but it's also for your business. And it's it's across the board something that you can feel satisfied in at the end of the day. I think that's the big thing. Like we can work ourselves to the bone. But if we're not satisfied and feel like we're growing or actually contributing or doing something worthwhile, it's that's when we get discontent, I think. Yeah, that's so, exactly right. And I think just just briefly on that, I think for mm-hmm. me, the ability to tell them that the reason why we built the company the way we did is is to make it better for their generation is important. And I think that, you know, reminding them of that, that there is a larger reason, there's a larger purpose. Um, I, I, I would hate to look back at my career and have my kids question why I contributed to something that didn't work. And so I, I, I think that's also super important is to look through the world from their eyes. So what are some of the big takeaways from having staff? And like, since you're remote too, it's a little different than what you would have ex- had the like real in the dirt experience with GE and big ass fans. How is it different? What, what takeaways do you have? You know, I, I think the, the biggest difference and, and really it's very different because I am a co-founder. And so I was brought on to lead big ass fans and help restructure it. But there there was a founder and the founder was the founder. And, and so it's very different. If you look at Truman's, what I try to do is remind people that they have permission to make decisions, that it is not the Alex and John show, the company is Truman's and they are empowered. They were brought on because we think they're special. We think they're bright and we think they're capable. And so I think the challenge that any founder faces and and anyone who has started a company, I'm sure can appreciate this, is that employees in the beginning feel as though they're tethered to us as individuals. And I feel like I'm constantly reminding them that we brought them on because we believe in them and they're there to actually own it. And they're there to make mistakes. We make mistakes. They're there to get things right. We get things right at times, not all the time, (laughs) every once in a while. But, you know, I think that's the important thing is that reminder. And it's, it's harder, right? It's, it's harder because, Things move so fast and we have to provide so much, so much context. And so for me, like I used to talk about at Big S Fans and even at GE that context was critical, clarity, consistency. You know, the human brain needs to feel like it understands why certain things happen. It under, needs to understand the rhythm of those things happening. And, you know, with a startup, it's, it's, it, every day is a new mountain, right? And there's a different fire. And and so it's really reminding them that they're part of it. 
and that the ups and downs are okay. And that we, I spent a lot of time providing context. So he, here's why we made the decision. And, and, and I try to be consistent with that because I know that there's so much inconsistency. And so, yeah, the only way you're going to solve it is, is constant reminders that they've got permission. They're fantastic at, at, at doing what they're doing and, and, and holding people accountable to a, to a reasonable standard within the context of what we do. Yeah, empowering people to Absolutely. do do the job that they're there to do is huge. And and how many people do you have right now? We have so if you look at our core team, it's under ten. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so we obviously have partners that extend mm-hmm. and make the team larger. We have contractors and we have um, third party companies that feel sometimes like they're they're part of Truman's. But you know, from a core operating team, it, it's very lean. Um, um, but again, we, we look at our strategic partners as, as right or wrong as, as part of our family. And so, you know, we do actually have a great agency right now that we work with on performance-based marketing and, um, you know, we, we consider them as part of the team and try to, to display those same values. And I think that's really valuable for people to, to know that it's not this big behemoth that needs to be created, even for consumer packaged goods. It's like, it can be done in a way that's uh, more attainable, ton of work and so yeah. difficult, but it's not like, okay, now I need to build a facility. Now I need to set up all the cubicles, do all these things that maybe we might assume that, oh, this, all of these steps are standard to any business. And I like showing how different they all are. You're right. And I think that the other thing that we want to do is, is, is is make the business real and and to do that it's tough right we can never outspend procter and gamble and we can never look at a brand like lysol and say more people are going to know truman's than lysol but the bottom line is we can provide an incredibly awesome product to a customer at a great price and, and we can provide an unbelievable level of customer service the only way to do that is for us to be lean and if we overspend on areas that ultimately don't deliver on that promise, we've got a lot stacked against us. And so, yeah, it, look, it's hard work, but you are so right that we didn't need to go out. And, and it's one of the things I talk about in the book. You don't need to be like Elon Musk at Tesla. You don't need to hire a thousand people. You don't need to build a huge factory. You can find a way to enter these categories in a very, very lean way and test it and see if it works and get your confidence up to make that leap. And then, as I said, once you've figured out that it works, you just scale it and and let it grow. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't want to take too much of your time. This was a great chat. I just like to ask everyone, uh, if this was, say this was a dream, everything you know, all your experience is fully valid, but you, you wake up tomorrow and it's like, oh, I actually, I don't have this. I need to start from the ground floor, but you have all the GE experience, all the experience building this company, what would be your first steps? Where would you start? Yeah, you know, look, I, I think if I could do it over again, I probably want to be a teacher. And so I think if I woke up it, with all of this knowledge, I, I would actually go teach because, you know, I and, and I could see myself doing it someday still. Um, but I love that question because I, you know, what, what I imagined was truly being in that moment where you wake up <laughs> and you call your co-founder and it's like, who is, you know, what, what are you talking about? You know, this is, <laughs> this is like the Truman Show or some weird movie that everything was a race. But yeah, I, I, I think, look, the, 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 the greatest impact that we can all have is paying it forward through knowledge and sharing experiences. And I think that hopefully the book that I wrote inspires people in that way. Um, But yeah, look, I think um, at this point in my life, I think the number one thing I could do is inspire a younger generation to think in this way. And I I would probably want to try to create an organization that, that did that um, and, and really, you know, took on capital to, to almost give, scholarships in a way to, to help people think in, in this way. Um, because, you know, there are, there are, you could drive down a city block and you mentioned, I live in New Orleans. 
you could drive all over the city and, and you're going to see young people with the most amazing ideas, kids with ideas that could truly change the world that are not stuck in this rat race that we all find ourselves stuck in where we look at something and we assume that's how it has to be. So, you know, I think with the knowledge I have today, if, if I were just to start from scratch, I'd probably say I'm going to go and, and help help people achieve this on a greater scale. And then I'd be able to look back and say that, you know, the impact was greater. And as a collective, as a collective ecosystem, we, we made a pretty, pretty big mark. Yeah, I love that. That's a wonderful note to go out on. I, so uh, where should people go to follow, follow along what you're up to and dive into uh, Truman's and check out the products? Yeah, I'll tell you if, uh, you know, if you want, if you want to laugh, go to Truman's.com. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our product names are hilarious. So definitely check that out. Um, also, people can connect with me on LinkedIn. I know it's typically more of a business platform, but I'm on it constantly. And I think it's one of the best ways to connect with people and, and really network to help. And I've helped a lot of, of entrepreneurs and I've met them on LinkedIn. And so really, I'd say Truman's.com and LinkedIn um, one of the best places to, to connect. Perfect. And what was the inspiration actually for the name? Truman's. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's a really cool story and we, we wanted a name. So we wanted a human name and we wanted the name to be direct and represent truth and, and have heritage to it. Um, and we, we said, okay, what's a name that works, but we know wouldn't be the name of the company. And the name that we kept thinking of was Frank. And we said, that's not going to be the name of the company, but it kind of captured where we were from a mindset perspective. And so Alex and I said, look, we're going to spend the weekend separately and, and we're going to just, you know, go after it. And within this concept of Frank and, um, one of us, I can't even remember who I, maybe I found like the concept of Truman's and we just loved it. And we thought, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's it. And, and what was, what was fascinating, we knew we were onto something when we, um, a, my lawyer has been my lawyer since the GE days. We called him, we said, yeah, we think we're going to call the company Truman's. And he said, guys, there's already a company called Truman's. Like you can't. And we said, actually, there's not. That's the, that's the craziest part. And so one, when, when we kind of knew that it was magical was, um, was, was like, number one, people thought that it already existed and it didn't exist. And then it just felt like, you know, we can almost picture this like Truman, like who Truman is. And it, mm -hmm. it's just really funny in our own mind. So, so we have this, like, it just, you know, it just, it felt right. And, um, and then since then, it's really become something super special. Yeah, I love that. Well, anyway, not to take any more of your time. Thank you so much for doing this. Amazing. I appreciate you. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully we'll stay in touch and talk Absolutely. again soon. Uh, awesome. Thanks so much. A big thanks goes out to John for joining me on this episode. Be sure to head on over to Truman's.com to check out his his company, the cleaning products, and the wonderful branding. You're really going to, I think you're going to crack up looking at it and giving it a read. Again, that's Truman's.com. As always, this episode of Starting Now is brought to you by Built. At Built, we help you get started online. Whether you want to start a blog or a business, head on over to Built.co. That's B-Y-L-T dot C-O to get started. Built. Your website, built for you, simply. Finally, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. Also, be sure to check out the video version on YouTube. You'll find all the links for this episode at Built.co slash 012. That's B-Y-L-T dot C-O slash zero one two. And that'll do it for this week. I'm Jeff Saris. This is Starting Now, and I'll see you next time.